What's up, everybody? We're gonna talk about character craft, which is something that's very important to this type of game. Um, some of the most interesting RPGs that I've played have characters that you can relate to, that you feel for. You know, we can use the stereotypical, uh, you know, example of Cloud. You know, losing his girlfriend, watching her die. It pulls on people's heartstrings. People can relate. Well, I'm not saying that you legitimately watch some psychopath come down from the sky and drive a katana through your girlfriend's head, but you can still relate. You know, they're 3D characters. They're very three-dimensional when they have emotions, when they endure suffering, um, and just something different. Right? We don't all just want the same character from every game. They may all look similar, uh, especially with a lot of the newer games. The protagonist is, you know, typically your blonde hair, little cloud looking clone. Um, you know, even in Brave Exvius, uh, you could say that uh, Rain had a lot of the same characteristics as Cloud. He had the spiky blonde hair, so on and so forth. Um, we're just using Cloud because he's a very easy character to relate to. Most people know exactly who Cloud is. By the way, I've made a little bit of progress in this game. I was actually able to summon some new buddies. I had a bunch of the rings to summon them. I just didn't know how to do it. Um, I guess I just had to go into a certain menu and, uh, you know, find a button to actually summon these guys. So I did upgrade the buddies, um... They're a low level, but they look much cooler, and, um, yeah, you guys will see them once I actually get into combat with something. Here we go. All right, so my brother from another mother down here has this cat supporting him. He is pretty damn awesome. Uh, and then I have this Amazon chick behind my little rogue girl. So, pretty awesome characters. I'm just going to auto through this. These shouldn't be that hard of a fight. I was just sent here for a quest. Uh, but it does look like Mr. Meow is leveling up, so that's good. I'm actually going to have to see what they do. I think they can use different spells other than just looking cool, right? But the, the reason we're talking about character craft is because the characters in this game... Ooh, ooh I wonder if I can steal something from the gold general. Let's see. I don't want to flee. Um... Who is this? Oh, it's my rogue. So she can actually use... I'll take that on him. Amazon chick can support her. Did we steal an item from him? Yes, we did. Heal chocolate. And we took his ass out. Everybody else is just going to get attacked, destroyed. So yeah, uh, I dig these characters. At first, I thought they were a little bit... You know, kind of stereotypical, you know. Um, we have Alex and Lita here. And they they are actually from, I, I think it's Tokyo. I don't know. They're, they're like a town over from each other. Because they talk about the different home worlds that they came from. And then we have Toril, which is a notoriously terrible elf name. It's been pointed out. But, you know... Might I add, it, she might not even be an elf. She might just be a race of munchkin. And I know if, what was it said? If it's got ears like an elf, if it looks like an elf, then yeah, I get it. It's elf-ish. Toril might not be, you know, the best elf name. Maybe that is just a nickname. Truth of the matter is, we probably couldn't even pronounce her real elf name. Unless you speak Draconic, which is harder to speak than ancient Latin. As far as I'm concerned, as far as Dungeons and Dragons has taught me. So, who knows? Toril might be short for Torilla Shasi, something crazy Indian sounding elf name. Who knows, right? Uh, what we do know, and I'm not going to try to spoil anything from for anybody, is that when the main character Alex and Lita find themselves in this world, um, they meet Toril and they meet Coden. My brother from another mother down here. I love this guy. He reminds me of Afro Samurai. If we could get some kind of armor that would actually give him like an Afro Samurai skin, I would kill for that shit. I think it would be dope AF, right? 
Uh, so these two come from different worlds, right? I don't want to ruin anything, but in a nutshell, Corin, Coden, Mr. Afro Samurai, comes from a world overrun with dragons. Humanity is fighting to extinction. Uh, it's trying to beat back the wave of dragons that are trying to destroy and enslave humanity. Just in a nutshell. So that is why his combat abilities far exceed everybody else's uh, when you first get him in the party. Same thing with Toril. Toril's not fighting a bunch of dragons in her home world. Um, Invader showed up. I don't know if they're aliens. They kind of make them sound like alien invaders. They show up and they're trying to destroy her world. They've pushed them back once and now they're in the middle of a great war. So these guys need to get back to their home worlds because, well, Coden has dragons to slay and Toril has, you know, aliens to kill, which <clears throat> I think is awesome, right? It opens up some, some awesome possibilities in the future. Maybe, just maybe. I can go to these other characters' worlds and help slay some dragons or fight some aliens, right? And then you get to Alex and Lita. It's kind of a heartthrob situation. It'll pull on your heartstrings a little bit. Don't want to ruin it for anybody, but you start noticing that everybody gets excited when they start talking about going home. Alex is excited. I can't wait to do this. Can't wait to do that. And then you notice that Lita kind of gets sad, and finally, after a few conversations, Alex picks up on this. And he's like, hey, what's the deal? You know, every time we start talking about going back home, I can kind of tell that you don't want to go. And it's really sad because Lita wants the best for everybody. She wants to help everybody return to their world. But unfortunately, you find out that Lita seems to be terminally ill. She's in a hospital bed. She's clinging to life. She needs a surgery just to have a chance at living. But in Fern's Gate, in this world, she says her body works fine and she can do things and she's not stuck in a hospital. So it almost brings a tear to Alex's face, uh, knowing that this girl lives pretty much in a hospital uh, because it's very sad. Uh, she's a very happy, upright girl. And you can tell why, because this is probably her first time actually enjoying any sort of outside world um you know so she didn't really get into what is making her sick she tried to keep as much of it to herself and you can tell she just doesn't want to bum alex out and alex is like we'll go home together you know and i'll go a town over and i'll visit with you you know but who knows this girl might not even live if she gets the surgery done it's the making of a very brave character, really. I have a lot of respect for Lita. Um, and just, I got to say, overall, these characters have been growing on me. And let's look at these buddies that we got. Let's look at these buddies that we got because they are pretty cool. They are pretty cool. You can go into the tactics screen, which, by the way, I also found out today this game was out for uh, Nintendo Switch. Whoa, had no idea there. And... PlayStation? I don't know. I just hey, works awesome on my phone though. Very happy to play this. Um, on a down note, the only thing I think this game really is missing. Um, I've said that this game really gives me some Lunar Silver Star Story complete vibes, which is one of my favorite RPGs of all time. And Lunar did not look anywhere near this good. The combat was not nearly anything this good or robust. There wasn't like materia systems. It was a very simple game. You equip a few items, you learn some magic, and you level up, and you just play through the storyline, the robust storyline, which this game also has. Here's one thing Lunar had over this game so far, though. Anime cutscenes. Playing through Lunar was like playing through an anime. There was like two and a half hours of an actual anime movie split up into the Lunar uh, anime PlayStation game. And the anime cutscenes felt like rewards. After you would fight a boss, you would get this awesome anime cutscene. I still remember <clears throat> the floating city of Vane. You see this giant city floating over your head. It's all animated. It's bright, vibrant colors. It just looked phenomenal. It even had an amazing soundtrack. Luna was an amazing singer. Um, she got her power from her magic voice, uh, which is why the magic emperor wanted to capture her. 
<clears throat> but the anime cutscenes of her singing sounds beautiful, looks amazing. I wish I still had uh, my Lunar video game. All six CDs of it with the soundtrack, with the making of Lunar CD. They just don't make them like that anymore. But they're at least making them close to that. I honestly gotta say, uh, they could do so much with this game. Um, if this game had the anime cutscenes and if they hired some sort of anime crew to really pull this together and to do something like that, this game would just be absolutely off the chain. Um, I'm already having an F ton of fun. I have not found a game that's even been close to this. As far as the nostalgia factor, the way that I feel about the characters and the party, it's slowly coming together. I am starting to feel for these characters, despite what you think of their names. They are very solid characters. So I wanted to throw that out there. Um, I think this game is great, uh, and hopefully they do a lot with it. Um, they could do a ton, and even the little anime gotcha system is awesome. You know, just being able to... Uh, the rates are great for what it is, and it's not just the rates. You're getting a pull for less than a dollar. I've already covered that. It is so nice to do. To throw 20 bucks and actually be able to get some good stuff out of it. Um, like these buddies that I got. Right? Uh, the ones at the bottom of the list. These are kind of special. Uh, Jade and Olivia. Um... So I did manage to get them, um, and if you can clear a banner for twenty dollars, you know if you can do twenty six pulls for twenty bucks, that's better than anything else that I see going on right now. So I've paid my sixty bucks. I've supported this game. I've taken the ads out. Uh, I feel very comfortable giving them that, and I'll probably give them some more later uh, if there's some new little buddies to roll on uh, or some cool new weapons. Um, I do dig the skins. I dig the cosmetics. You couldn't do that in Lunar. Um, actually, no, I think your weapon would change, kind of. Uh, but not anything like this with the skins and with the buddies. Uh, there's still a bunch of buddies I need to get. There's a bunch of question marks in here, but uh, there's some cool little buddies. The Goblin Chief looks cool. Um, you can get a butterfly, a tree. So you can get a Pokemon. Scorch Golem looks pretty gnarly. Uh, and they all have different forms of support and different things they can do. And hey, if you're big on sushi, you can quite literally have a sushi support you. Here's Excalibur. Uh, Excalibur is in training right now. There's the Punisher, which is a guy in a barrel. I just thought that was kind of funny. Licker's some kind of bird. A sheep is a floating sheep. <clears throat> so a lot of good stuff in here. Just a lot of cool, interesting little characters. I think the Fitch looks pretty cool. Um, they all have different skills to their disposal. Um, and obviously they can all be leveled up. Look at that. The Lizard Man looks pretty awesome here. Did a pretty good job on this guy's sprite. He's got Cure 4, Freeze 2, Freeze Cannon. Um, so I'm going through all of this. Obviously these powerful uh, buddies that I have down here are low level. I'm so glad I got Jade. I dig cats. Cats are my favorite. I mean, look at his cane. His cane is a freaking cat. <laughs> so, uh, just really cool stuff. A gentleman cat from another world whose fur is delightful to the touch. What about Olivia? A priestess seeking power to save one she loves. She's trying to save me. Isn't that sweet? So, uh, yeah, this game, definitely I'm going to be playing it. Um, Support this game guys if you want a good solid RPG that brings back some nostalgia that has characters that you can really dig on um, You know this might be worth a shot. It's out there for switch. It's out there for PlayStation, but you might as well just get it for your phone um, I'm even going to buy the nunchuck controllers for my ROG phone just to be able to you know actually play this game with a d-pad I'm not a huge fan of touch screens with d-pads on them um, so that is how much I plan to actually play this game uh, especially after I find out found out that you're not just capped at level 100 you can get to like level 300 in this and you can jack your stats way out with all the seeds that you grow 
Then you get to power up your actual little buddies. The story mode's great. I can't wait to see how it all chimes together. Uh, we already know who the bad guy is here. Uh, the guy's got some balls. He flat out came out. Uh, he stopped one of his generals from killing us and was like, look, I'm not ready to, uh, what did he say? Uh, to reap their mana. So the main bad guy in this game has pretty much already told us, uh, you're too weak right now. When you get a little bit stronger, uh, I will come and kill you and steal all your power. So that's what we're contending with right now. We are the resistance. You meet the bad guy as soon as you start playing this game. He's pretty much been absorbing other worlders like you. When your mana's high enough, he will come and harvest you. And the challenge, you know, the difficulty level all around the map, it's not easy. There's places you can't go to and you got to come back. Like, I was just in a low level area. I found a little cave. And it was pretty much like, hey, uh, if you go in here, everything's level 80 and up. And I got, ex I got it destroyed right off rip. So that's a high challenge level area uh, in a low level map. So even after you go through and level up, you're going to have to go back and find all these little places. Hold on a second. I can get this girl to actually steal something. That's what I want to do. I'll take that. Yeah, you can backtrack and you can find a lot of different dungeons and stuff that you couldn't clear on your first way through. So that gives us some replay value. Um, and I haven't even started actually messing around with the different items and the different possibilities um, and actually start crafting weapons the way that I want. Um, it's taken me literally this long, 10, 12 hours into the game, to figure out the buddy system, to how to actually summon them, which is silly. Uh... <clears throat> and I've also obviously at this point I figured out how the items work uh, That takes a little bit of time and actually sitting down and combining the items the way that you want to But it's not that hard to figure out and overall it's a very good and robust system And I don't think the combat here is going to get old. I can tell you this right now This combat is a lot better than than it was in Lunar uh, Lunar's combat was a lot more rudimentary and a lot more simple I'm finding rings all over the place. Uh, and once you leave a dungeon and you come back, it's like restocked. Um, so that is pretty cool. Lots of things I'm liking about this game. And it's just a nice change of pace coming over from some of these gotchas where you want the new character, you better drop $300 right now. Well, uh, the only thing I would suggest in this game that's a must... Oh, I missed that one. I should have went down there. The only thing I recommend in this game is a must is just pay the seven dollars so that there's no ads, and you will have an awesome gaming experience. And that way, you're supporting the game. Uh, this game company seems to be smart. Uh, like the approach that Square and Gummy take to it is, who cares about free-to-play players? Who cares about everybody? We have whales that will pay us a thousand dollars a month, and our game will survive just off of that. Um, it seems like this game has figured out that it's easier to get everybody to pay $7 than it is to have one unlucky fool fork out $1,000 a month to you. So that is something that I think is worth noting. I think it's worth supporting because it's just a good idea overall. Um, oh, that's right. I got to jump on these guys, their backs are turned to me. I think that's also cool too. Actually, I was in a dungeon area where I couldn't kill anything, um, but they were worth a ton of experience. And I got lucky, I managed to get through one fight where I got to jump on the enemy and I managed to kill one of them and it, it leveled everybody up quite a bit, so that was cool. Oh snap. So yeah, I've been having a lot of fun over in this title. It's simple. It looks beautiful. I like how vibrant and light everything is. Uh, typically, I like games that are darker, but I dig this. Like I said, uh, I wish they had like some anime cutscenes. They could have done so much with this, uh, but they didn't. It is what it is. Let's see. Who is this? I'll take that. Wait a minute. I want to target this guy. Make sure she uses that. 
That way at least we're getting free items from him. Uh, I also have... The main character has this grabber. I know it looks silly. It looks like one of those things that, like, somebody in a wheelchair will use to, like, reach something. It's like a little grabber. But it's actually a top-tier weapon. It's got great stats, as you can see, and it doubles your steel chance. The problem is I have not managed to get the steel material for him yet, so uh, I think when I do, that item's going to be a lot more better. Okay, this is where I wanted to jump down, right? I just know there was a chest down here and I wanted to get it. But yeah, I like how easy it is to, uh, you know, program the moves that you want to work on and then just keep hitting repeat and it will keep doing what you programmed it to do. It's easy to work on the skills that you want to work on that way without having to go through all the menus. And if something has a cooldown, uh, it'll just bring up a menu when you try to repeat. Support, repeat, there we go. And you can choose something else. <clears throat> so overall, a lot of fun in this game. And for 7 bucks, I think this, this one is definitely worth taking a look at. Uh, especially if you're like a hardcore RPG player. Because uh, like I said, there, there hasn't been a lot of games that have actually impressed me. Sword plus 20. Hey, this has int 30 on it. I can transfer that to another stat or another weapon if I want. So it's, it's honestly, I think these games are pretty rare, finding a good one like this. So that is why uh, I'm suggesting people actually give this one a try. And of course we have like the bob characters that have a self-destruct move built in. Um, and that's just awesome. There's so much variation in the enemies that you fight. Uh, you know, and then there's the boxes that you have to break in the middle of a fight if you want to break them and get extra items. So pretty cool. Overall, very happy. Was very surprised. And hey, the skins are never going to get old. Like I said, as soon as this dude down here gets a Afro Samurai skin, uh, I'm going to be all over that thing. I'll have to pull it. And speaking of which, like I said, the, uh, 